Greetings and salutations, travelers of the internet. Welcome to the Lit Roundtable. I'm Anna. And I'm Joseph. We'll be your wise or not so wise mentors for today's audio adventure and all things storytelling. And today we have a fun topic. We are going to be talking about our our top five cliffhangers. Woohoo! In in movies, TV shows, books, cliffhangers. Things that leave the audience in suspense. Yes. Yes. So. Before we do that, though, mm -hmm. we do need to announce what our new read-along will be. Yay. Which is going to be Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson, which is very exciting because Joseph and I haven't wanted to read this for a very long time. So. It'll be your first Sanderson novel. It will. It will. So be on the lookout for the reading schedule for that. Um, That will be starting up next week already so mm -hmm. um, i will get that posted a lickety split love it but yeah and Very of course exciting. if you want to participate in voting for our read-alongs you gotta be a member of that patreon which is linked down below mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or in the description or you know it's linked all in over the places place. You can find it. If you look, you can find it. Yes. The the lowest tier gets you voting rights. Yep. So yep. super easy to get that. Um, but yeah, so we're talking cliffhangers. Cliffhangers. Um, you know, I realized as I was making this list, first of all, I picked five. Mm -hmm. These are the five I could think of. Yeah. So it's very possible that there are other cliffhangers out there that I am aware of. And just don't remember at the moment that are better. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> but I, as I was like looking through lists of like top 10 TV cliffhangers or whatever, I realized that the um, the fact that we didn't have like TV in the traditional sense for most of our like high school days. Yeah. Meant that um, I have just been a binge TV watcher for most of my life. Yeah. At this point. Yeah. And when you binge a TV show that has been completed, you don't feel the cliffhangers the same way. Right. You just hit next. That is true. So some of the lists, like, I have a small list of shows that were on all of those top fives that I was like, oh, yeah, I guess they did have, like, pretty significant cliffhangers. I just didn't necessarily experience them. <laughs> same. Yeah. Um. So we can talk about those, too. But. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. That was my observation in this process. Mm -hmm. I agree. Since since we grew up like watching TV shows on disc, mm -hmm. like seasons at a time. If the season finale was a cliffhanger, that's one thing. But like, usually that was just a matter of going back to going, Shopco, buying the next season. Wow, right? Shopco. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oof. So like. Um, I should have Stargate on here because I feel like there were quite a few season finales of Stargate SG One that we were like, "Whoa!" Yeah, but, the first season I think was a yeah. pretty big one. Um, but uh, yeah, like my my top one is one that might I know a lot of people liked it, but it's like my like the cliffhanger that like got me the most hyped and like in the most suspense. The other four are ones that also were, like, really, really big for me, but they also kind of took the internet by storm and mm -hmm. had, like, people online were just, like, speculating and, and like, they were just really, really big cliffhangers in, like, the pop culture sphere as well. Sure, so. sure. Well, man, I'm very curious now about what's on yeah. your list. So shall we start with number five and then work um, our way up? Yeah, I didn't necessarily have mine ranked in any particular order, but I will do that very quickly in my brain. Yeah, my like my top one is ranked. My other ones are kind of interchangeable, so like don't worry okay. too much about okay. being super exact with your. Yeah, ranking. we should start with five. Um, five for me, I put uh, Avengers: Infinity War. Oh, okay. I didn't even because think about the Avengers movies. Wow. They all get. Like Thanos snaps his fingers and half the universe just dies. Right. And yeah, that should be end. on my list. This is always what no, it's happens. Okay. You it's think okay. of things and I'm like, oh yeah, duh. <laughs> it's but. just, 
And then like the the ramp up to end game was mm-hmm. so intense, like the marketing and the the speculation online, all the theory crafters, you know. Um, yeah. So Avengers: Infinity War deserved a spot on my list. Okay. For sure. Well, spot five on my list is a book, mm. um, and it's Hunger Games: Catching Fire. See. Um, Hope, when I was trying to think of my list, Hope had talked about Hunger Games Mm -hmm. and a specific moment in Hunger Games. I'm curious if it's the moment you're thinking of that you're going to say. I'm sure it is. But I don't know. I didn't have I didn't have specific moments. I just remember. So I read this back in college. So like this was a long time ago for me. Sorry, I don't remember all the I just remember that I finished Catching Fire before I went to Europe and Mockingjay wasn't out in the U.S. yet. Like, it was about to come out while I was in Europe, and I found it in a airport bookstore in London. Nice. That's so cool. And so I, because I was so amped up for Mockingjay, I bought it in London. Um, And so, therefore, (laughs) my copy of Mockingjay is not the same size. (laughs) Yeah. As my other copies yeah. of the Hunger Game books, which normally would bother me, but because of because of that whole story, it doesn't. Um, mm-hmm. So I just, uh, yeah, I felt like that deserved a spot on my list because I was so excited about it that I saw it in London and bought it in London to bring back to the states yeah. with me. So I think I, I think like it, it was probably deserving. I think it probably was the moment because Hope said like the end of the second to last book is just like Katniss, there is no District Thirteen. Right. Like, yeah. Um, yes, that, that is. Moment. Yes, yes. I wasn't sure so. if Hope was talking about the movies or the books, because the movies they split Mockingjay into two movies. In the mm. yeah, they split the third one into they did. two movies. So yeah, like obviously there's a cliffhanger there because it's the middle of the story. Yeah. So you know. Right. Yeah, that's back when that was really popular to do. They did that with the last Harry Potter movie. Mm-hmm. And then they did it with, like, everything around that same time. Mm-hmm. It's very annoying. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it That's got to one, be though. very annoying. Anyway. If I had read those books, I, that might have ended up on my list, for sure. Yeah. Um, Let's see. My number four spot is Game of Thrones, The Red Wedding. Yeah. See, I couldn't... That's totally fair. And I have Game of Thrones on my like binge list because that was one that I binged a season at a time initially mm-hmm. sort mm-hmm. of right or did we watch those all synchronous I don't know I um yeah I just couldn't remember what episodes because it felt like they were all cliffhangers in some way yeah they definitely tried to leave you in suspense almost every time but I yes. remember that one the uh, Red Wedding in particular yes just being like oh, oh and actually okay. I think that episode's name is the Reigns of Castamere I don't think it's called the Red Wedding Oh, you're right. Because you're I think right. if they'd call it the Red Wedding, everyone would be like, oh. The Red Wedding just being the moment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the moment. Yeah. The the uh, yes. infamous Red Wedding scene. You're right. It is the Reigns of Castamere, though. I had typed the Reigns of Castamere first, and then when I like changed the order, I think I like subconsciously <laughs> changed it to the Red Wedding. Because I, I remember my phone not liking the word Castamere. <laughs> How dare it. Not Weird. like the fantasy name. Yeah. <laughs> So that's funny. I didn't even realize I changed that. So what's your fourth spot? Um, my fourth spot, <laughs> this is kind of silly, but I put Demon Slayer, particularly this last season. Like, and I feel like every season finale of Demon Slayer ends on a note of like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for the next season. Yeah, um, that's very like recent extra. for me. But this, this season finale, before we go into the last three movies, they really ended that with a punch, um, with mm-hmm. them all falling into the... Yeah. Whatever you call that. So Infinity Castle. Yeah. Thank you. So I felt like that was deserving to be on the list because, whoa, mm-hmm. that whole last episode was bonkers. That's definitely the most recent cliffhanger that I've experienced. <laughs> yeah, and that too. Uh, that too. I love it. I love it. And another thing about Game of Thrones too, just like the way that episode ended, I mean, spoilers if you oh, haven't sorry. seen Game of Thrones and you're planning on it. Were you not ready um, for me to move on to the next one? I'm so no, sorry. I, had ac- I accidentally moved on too fast, but okay. I just wanted to make a comment <laughs> on the moment okay, okay. that the episode ends. It's just like Caitlin Stark is just like standing there after screaming, watching her son get shot to death with crossbows. Mm-hmm. And then she just like gets her throat slit and then it goes to black. 
like it was so visceral and just so brutal. Yeah. yeah. Well, it happens Ugh. so fast. Yeah. And then yeah. you see, like, she starts to bleed, and then it cuts to black. Yeah. And, and she that, falls over. And just the reins of Castamere will start playing. Yeah. Brutal. It's brutal. Crazy. It's hard to watch. Mm-hmm. I have not rewatched mm-hmm. it. It's very dark. I watched it that one time and was like, oh, man, that's enough. For me, personally. Oof. Well, next for the number three spot. This is one that took Tumblr in particular by storm. Oh, really? And this is Sherlock. Oh, <laughs> I did see this on a lot of the lists. The Reichenbach Fall. Mm-hmm. And it's the episode where, again, spoilers for this whole episode of, of the podcast, but like um, where he like, top. yeah, Mor- Moriarty like shoots himself and then Sherlock jumps off a building and presumably dies. Um, Tumblr was lit on fire <laughs> for like. <laughs> well, it was like, how are they possibly going to continue the show? Like, I think it was assumed, like, yeah. I guess the show is done. But then they announced another season. And right. It was like, it was okay. very confusing. So how did he survive? And so it was just this huge conversation online of like how he lived. What's it going to do to Watson? Like, how is it going to start in the next season? Like, there's just all the speculation around it was just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there are lots of supernatural. Okay. You mentioned Tumblr, which made me think of the Sherlock Whovians. There's lots of um, supernatural episodes that also end like in the later seasons, especially that. Yeah. On the cliffhanger. Hope mentioned when I was talking to her about this, she mentioned the supernatural season one cliffhanger when that semi comes out of nowhere and like hits their car while their dad's in the car with them. Yeah. And the episode just ends. (laughs) I had forgotten about that. Yeah. I had too. I had forgotten about that too. Yeah. That shows a ride. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay. So my number four, my number three spot. I'm going to put Star Wars, the Empire Strikes Back for number three. The Empire Strikes Back. That's what I said. You said the Emperor. I'm sorry. (laughs) But it's okay. We started watching the Emperor's New Groove last night, so it must be stuck in my head. (laughs) Um, The Empire Strikes Back. Hey man, I never like considered that as I saw, I saw that on lists, mm-hmm. but I, in my brain had never really considered that a cliffhanger, but I could definitely, because I could watch the next one almost like right away, you know, yeah. but like thinking back to what it must've been like to see that one in theaters, like when it first came out, right. like yes. Darth Vader's his dad, he loses a hand, Han Solo's kidnapped. What? Like well, Han I could see that. Han Solo's frozen in carbonite. So as far as we know, yeah. he's dead. <laughs> Because, like... He's in hibernation. How do you... I'm, right, he's in hibernation. Yeah. But, like, we don't have a concept of being frozen in carbonite and being able to survive that. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's why it's lower. It's not, like, not my top one. Because I think The Empire Strikes Back is, like, one of the movies on this list is, like, up there as far as my favorite movies goes. Mm-hmm. But, um, you, you're right. We, like, we watched it as kids. The movies have been out forever. It's like the most we would have had to wait is like a week to the next family movie night. Mm-hmm. Um, or, or probably longer because I think mom and dad waited on letting us watch Return of the Jedi quite a while. Yeah, because of a the rainforest longer. scene. Because it's scary. And I still had to close my eyes for that for a long time. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, uh, but, but like you said, like if I put myself in the shoes of not having access to the next movie very quickly that would be like a pretty significant cliffhanger of what's gonna happen next Mm -hmm. yeah my number two spot this is one that also took the internet by storm and really opened up a lot of conversations of like the relationship between the writers and the audience and like Mm. how much people are willing to tolerate (laughs) in a cliffhanger Mm. you i don't think you you have not seen this You're okay. um, because you don't like zombies. It's The um, Walking Dead. I did see that on a lot of lists and I was like, I don't know anything about this. Um, <laughs> I was watching The Walking Dead as it was airing when this particular season came out. I haven't seen any Walking Dead stuff in a long time just because like, it just went too long. But um, The Walking Dead Last Day on Earth is the episode where Negan, who is like the comic books, big bad, like most 
most like brutal and dangerous bad guy Mm -hmm. um, comes out and it ends with him having the group like on their knees in front of him. And he's got his barbed wire covered baseball bat and he's just doing eeny, meeny, miny, mo to see who he's going to, whose head he's going to bash in and kill with his baseball bat. And it ends with him picking someone, the someone being the camera's POV, but you don't see who the person is. He just says it's you and then bashes the person or like from the POV of the camera's head in. But you never see who the person is. You just see him bash the camera in until it like goes red and it goes black. That's horrifying. Like, yeah. So like it went from that, like that was the end of the season all the way until the next the next like season before anyone knew who the character was that he picked. Like a lot of people just stopped watching. <laughs> They were like, what nope. an interesting choice as a film. Like, creatively, I kind of respect it, but I also yeah. totally respect the audience being like, nah, I'm not playing that. Yeah, it definitely. Not if I have to wait a whole year. Yeah. Um, um, that could have been like a penultimate were... season, like the <laughs> second to last episode. Yeah, people were super frustrated with that. And then. In the next episode, when you learn who the person is, um, it was it was this character named uh, Abraham, and he gets bashed in, and it's like okay, but then someone in the group freaks out and punches Negan because because of that, and then he's like okay, you haven't learned your lesson, and then he bashes another character's head in, and he oh kills a second character, and so it was just, it was just like oh my goodness, you guys, you guys are really. Uh, testing the limits and the one the second one that he bashed in was like a fan favorite like oh gosh um so like they were really testing what they could get away with with an audience and it like both of those episodes just totally set the internet on fire for like weeks Do you, okay i'm so curious and this is probably a different episode but like the idea of character death in tv shows i feel like game of thrones kind of ruined the trust relationship uh, and maybe it wasn't Game of Thrones, but it feels like Game of Thrones is like one of the big shows that mm-hmm. did this, that nobody's safe, regardless of how much plot armor you think they have. They don't actually have it. Yeah. Um, but I think that like when you're telling a story, the writer has to build a certain amount of trust with the audience of like, mm-hmm. you can have a character, a fan favorite character. Um, and like wild crap is going to happen to them, but they're still going to be around. Mm -hmm. And -hmm. I think that there's a certain amount of trust that goes into that. And I think that game of Thrones, like the first big character death that you see. So maybe season one, the season one finale of game of Thrones should be on my list because Ned Stark being killed in the season finale of season one. That's the first like time that a a main character in game of Thrones bites it. And then from there on out, like, nobody's safe. Um, so I probably should have had that season one finale on my list. But, because you just don't know what's going to happen after that. I had definitely thought about it, but... Again, we were we were binging that. At and that so, time. like, yeah. I got to just pop in the next disc. <laughs> right, right. For so sure. So it wasn't for me, it wasn't a cliffhanger, but again, I could see people that were watching it, like as it aired, who weren't book readers also, Mm -hmm. um, freaking out over that, for sure. Yeah. but uh, So anyway, that's probably a different topic, like this idea. And I think since Game of Thrones, TV shows have taken more liberty in just offing characters. Mm -hmm. I do think that's a good conversation for a future episode, for sure. Just like character death in general, and Mm -hmm. like what, in storytelling, like what you can and can't do, what you should and shouldn't do, you know. And, like, sometimes you just throw the rules out the window and you just kill Ned Stark. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, I have I have so many thoughts on that in particular. But mm-hmm. we, we should save that for another time. For sure. Good uh, number idea. two. Number two. Um, yeah, the number two for me was The Walking Dead. So then for you. Oh, um, yeah. oh man. Okay. I'm afraid that my number two is going to steal your number one spot. It's okay. Um. And when you sent me our topic for today, I immediately thought of this video you had sent me, which is why I think it's your number one spot. Um, uh-huh. 
So I have Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that that's the second Pirates of the Caribbean movie for those folks that might not know the name of the, the movie. But um, the I so distinctly remember being in the theater with you and mom and dad watching the end of that movie and then immediately the credits start and being like, what just happened? And then I think that what? we as a family spent like the next week just speculating on what could possibly happen next. And I think we went and saw that movie again as a family. Like, I think we all saw it multiple times in theater. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah, so I'm just going to say that was my number one spot, obviously. Dead so was, I don't want to talk about any, I don't want to talk about it too much as my number two spot because I want, yeah. So well, I mean, in, you talk, you talking about it as your number two and then me talking about it as my number one would have been back to back anyway. Right. So we can just kind yeah. of like mush them together. Yeah. Um, like, I have never had that theater experience of just being like, WTF <laughs> like yeah. Yeah. um what did I just watch what just happened this is insane like the movie ends with Jack Sparrow Captain Jack Sparrow being eaten by the Kraken mm-hmm. and then uh Davy Jones's heart is missing from his chest Norrington mm-hmm. delivers it to to Beckett and then the everyone goes back to Tia Dolma's shack, mm-hmm. her little like hut, and then Barbosa's back, and he's like gonna help him, even though he died in the last movie. Like, it was just such a, it was just such a wham, bam, 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 bam of like all these different things. Just like the yeah. suspense at the end of that movie was so real. Like, yeah. I, oh, it was also peak pirates. Yeah, uh, the game that we would play as a family, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and like there was a set. Of this Pirates game that came out in conjunction with this movie with like the cursed people and like Davy Jones and like sailing around and like blowing yeah. each other up. So there was like so many things happening like that built in into our the hype. World. Yeah. In our specific like childhoods for yeah. this movie. And it was just mwah. like that yeah. is the ultimate cliffhanger movie in my mm-hmm. mind forever. Is that Pirates game? Was that also put out by WizKids? Yeah. Wild. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, that, that scene of Barbosa coming down the steps. And then I just remember like scrutinizing the movie and like going through it with a fine tooth comb. Like what were the clues? How, what were, mm-hmm. and like there are clues throughout the whole thing, right? There's like little Easter mm-hmm. eggs. And I just remember that being such a cultural moment too. Yeah. Of like online speculation of, not, I mean, you and I weren't online so much then. And not so but, much for that one, but uh, I remember like going back and rewatching it, getting the DVD, watching the DVD over and over mm-hmm. again, mm-hmm. like seeing the moment when Jack the monkey like mm-hmm. runs over to his body on the table, even though you don't know it's his body, you can only see his boots. But like in hindsight, yeah. you're definitely like, oh no, that's him. Like he's already there. Sure. Just his body is just chilling in that room, waiting to get revived, I guess. Right. By the creepy sea witch. Mm-hmm. So, is yeah, that movie was just. Man. So much. I need to go rewatch those movies. Those are good movies. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> I They're love so the good. Pirates movies. The first three Pirates of the Caribbean movies are like one of my favorite trilogies ever. Yeah. So. The fifth one? Man. The fourth one's okay. The fifth one. Mm-mm. Yeah. Mm-mm. yeah. Um, although, okay, there are moments in the fifth one that are very like fans, like fan oriented, which I appreciate, but the bulk of the movie is. Not great. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway. Okay, so Agreed. that leaves my number one. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised this one wasn't on your list. Oh? It's Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Oh, you know what? Yeah, that one's pretty brutal. <laughs> it is. It is. I, um, I, I don't even remember if you and I had watched the first one. Like, if I watched that with you and Hope. I know that Blake and I watched it, and then we watched... Across the Spider-Verse, because he mentioned that it was one of his top movies. Um, and I was like, I mean, the first one was good. I just don't... <laughs> I didn't quite understand the hype. And then we watched it, and it ended, and I was like, oh my gosh, we have to watch the third one. We have to watch it right now. And he's like, it's not out yet. And I was so it, mad. <laughs> this one just came out. <laughs> I was so mad. I was like, yeah. what do you mean? It's not out yet. 
That one would definitely make it on, it on like an honorable mentions list for me for sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that one that was a brutal cliffhanger for sure. That was like, what? What do you mean? That's <laughs> it. <laughs> We're just getting started. I just remember watching it and being like, man, we've been watching this for a long time. And we are like, just getting like, like the whole thing is so good. But it's like, yeah. I remember asking Blake, how much is left of this movie? Like how much? Cause I felt like we've been watching it for a long time, but there was so much that still had to happen. And he was like, Oh, there's like, there's like 10 minutes now left. And I was like, there's no way, there's no way nope. they're going to wrap this up in 10 minutes. Nope. They didn't. They sure didn't. So Yeah. Great choice. Thank you. That is so good. What a good movie. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like cliffhangers in general, like just to briefly talk about cliffhangers, like as a storytelling device, mm -hmm. I think that mm -hmm. they can be like, obviously you do them for a reason to get people like leave people wanting more, leave people wanting to come see the next thing. Especially I feel like cliffhangers happen in general when you know that you're going to get a continuation. Like, if if you know you've already gotten a deal for a, a next season of whatever show you're working on, you're like, yeah, we're going to leave them in suspense so they definitely come back and watch the second one. And we're going to make it so that everyone's just talking about this show even while we're on a break, you know? So, like, from a marketing yeah. standpoint, it totally, like, makes sense for, like, building the hype. But it's kind of funny to me how, how this works, right? Like, the first Spider-Man, the Spider-Verse movie with Miles Morales... Self-contained story, really well done. Everybody loves the movie. They're like, okay, let's do another one. And then the mm -hmm. second one comes out, and they're like, all right, here's this crazy cliffhanger. It's because they didn't oh, know sure. they were going to get another one with the first movie. But now that they know they're locked in for like future movies and everyone loves it, they're like, oh, now we can dangle the carrot in front of you. This and is so typical, too, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. the same thing, the exact same thing happened with Star Wars, the original trilogy. Mm -hmm. They thought they were going to mm -hmm. get one movie, which is why it was originally just called Star Wars. Yeah. Um, it did really well. It's a very self-contained story. You could watch mm -hmm. Star Wars or New Hope and not watch any other content and feel like you've got a complete nutshell story. Yeah. And then they got The Empire Strikes Back. And it was like, oh, well. Yep. <laughs> we can leave them wanting more. It's the same with the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Yep. They didn't know they were going to get sequels. So they made the first one as a complete story. Mm -hmm. It's very typical. Yes. It's just uh, funny but the, whenever... But the Spider-Man movies, they went hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they didn't even try to tie that up. <laughs> you, you know, you know, whenever it's a it's a franchise that you love and you're mm -hmm. like, oh, they finally got a sequel movie. Oh, even though ready. the first one, the first one was like a self-contained story, but everyone loved it. And it's finally got a sequel now. I can't wait to go see it. It's like, well, get ready to leave that theater like incredibly like <laughs> just like on edge mm -hmm. because you're gonna get the craziest cliffhanger you've ever seen dude yeah um for sure yeah it's it's predictable for sure but like fine like it doesn't yeah it doesn't bother me it's not a critique it's an observation yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah i mean for that matter there are lots of times i mean we could have put critical role on these lists too like there's lots of times when uh an yeah. episode of critical role ends and you're like oh my gosh we have to wait a whole week like, I can think mm -hmm. of four episodes that that happened to in just this current season. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I feel like every single time Matt Mercer says, and that's where we'll pick up next time, like, everybody is oh, like, no! no! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes, though, it's like, for real? Mm -hmm. You can't go 20 more minutes? <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good stuff. Mm -hmm. Well. Yeah, that's it for our, our top five cliffhangers. So let us know in all the places what you what cliffhangers that you really enjoyed or thought of that we missed. Yeah, we want to hear all about it. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, like when I was watching Breaking Bad, it was all done and oh, I binged the whole thing. For sure. Okay, so yeah, yeah. Like, Speaking of, my mm -hmm. list of shows that, that I couldn't... Yeah, okay. Breaking Bad is one of those shows. Like, uh -huh. I know that there were cliffhangers, but because I was watching it well after it had completely finished, yeah. I just got to hit next. It was easy. You binged it. Yeah. Grey's Anatomy. Oh, yeah. Same thing. I, I binged the first, like, five seasons, seasons or, so. of that yeah. or something, <laughs> and then started watching it synchronous. I've since fallen off, but um, 
yeah, there's lots of those episodes that's like, oh my gosh, for real. Um, Game of Thrones is on here. Lost. Did you ever watch Lost? I've only seen, like, I haven't even seen the whole first season, but I've seen some of it. Oh gosh, that show, like, every episode. Yeah. Every episode. It's like, like the I whole don't point know of the show. How you pick one. Yeah. Um, yeah. What a weird show. Yeah, every, yeah, every episode. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so those cool. are the ones I thought of right now yeah for sure but. I, I second all of those mm -hmm. except for Lost which I haven't seen all of but you know <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah for our uh, watching reading and playing well, yeah. so we actually had the opportunity because Anna and Blake came down to visit uh, Hope and I so mm -hmm. we got to watch some we got to watch anime and play games and it was it was fun so um some of the things that we did while you were here mm -hmm. for watching we watched some fruits basket yeah all together um and we played so many games we, we played some magic we played dominion we played betrayal we played okay. Catan. you gotta say the whole things betrayal at house on the hill Oh, okay, fine. We played Magic the Gathering. We played Dominion. We played Betrayal at House on the Hill. We played Settlers of Catan. We played Ascension. I think it's just called Ascension. That's, yeah. Because we just played the uh, base game. We didn't play yeah. any expansions. We played Monikers. Mm -hmm. We played Sushi Go Dim Sum. That was so Which fun. was fun. The squishy was very little... cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we got to watch uh, Anna and Blake play a throwback. They played a little bit of Lord of the Rings The oh, Third that's Age. Right. We did. Yeah. Throwback. So Loudwater cool. Fury. All day. Yep. So those are the things that we did while you were here. Yes. Yes. Um, getting those out of the way. Um, yeah. Now that those are out of the first. way. What have I been watching? So... Hope and I have been on a little bit of a scary movie kick in preparation for the spooky Halloween season. Um, so we have kind of binged a lot of scary movies. So this is, I think, loosely in the order we watch them in, kind okay. of. Um, we watched Halloween, like the first Halloween movie with Jamie Lee Curtis. See, that was on some of the lists. Is there a cliffhanger at the end of that? Um, I guess, yeah. Because it's like, did Jason die? Uh, no, he didn't. No. Um, but honestly, as far as like scary movies go, it was it was pretty boring. <laughs> like, it's okay. older. It's like the first slasher movie. So like, it was a lot of hope, and I just staring at the screen, be like, do something, kill someone. <laughs> <laughs> You're just standing there breathing. Kill someone. Uh, uh, we're so desensitized. I mean, but, yeah, yeah, when you talk about The Walking Dead and then that, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Um, after that, we watched Evil Dead, which was just a gore fest. So it was pretty much the opposite of Halloween. Um, it was so violent, it was almost comical. So that's... Gotcha. But uh, there was that. We watched Event Horizon, kind of a sci-fi horror about a ship that's trying to accomplish faster than light travel by like entering a wormhole and going in and then exiting a wormhole somewhere else. Only they don't realize that the wormhole sends you into an old, like an alternate dimension and the ship like pretty much goes to hell on accident. Um, <laughs> yeah. We watched the invisible man, mm. uh, that new, that new one that came out semi recently. Okay. Um, the lady from handmaid's tale the main character uh, from that show, if you've seen that show. The main character? Yeah, like the blonde uh, lady. The Scientology lady? Yes. She Anya, is Anya something? No. I don't No no no. No. I don't remember what her name is, but yeah, the Scientology lady. Anyway. <laughs> uh, she is the main character in the Invisible Man. But uh She's creepy. Yeah, that was a good movie. Um I mean Scientology is creepy. I didn't, the, the I didn't mean that, but yes, agreed. <laughs> <laughs> um the Invisible Man was also creepy. Just about, like, what do you do when someone who's invisible is, like, tormenting you and, like, messing with you? Mm -hmm. Like, nobody believes you because they can't see him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we watched Let the Right One In, which is a um, older now Swedish vampire movie that's actually okay. a book adaptation. I didn't know it was a book adaptation. 
Um, it's a vampire story. So there's this small child who is a vampire and another small child who's not a vampire. And they like become friends and have this whole mm-hmm. relationship evolve. Um, and there's also some like interesting like representation of like the queer people that I wasn't expecting. Hmm. Um, which you'd have to kind of watch it to understand what I'm talking about. But yeah, um, it was, it was good. It's more of like an artsy, like don't go in expecting like blood and guts and like super big, like crazy scares. It's more character focused and more like, it's, it's more artistic. It's really good though. It is in Swedish though. So subtitles, um, we watched the curse of La Llorona which was honestly pretty mid. It was Mm -hmm. very typical. And Hope and I both fell asleep for like 20 minutes of it at the same time. (laughs) Oh, dear. Okay. Hey, those Um, 20 minutes could have been bangers. Probably. So, okay. There's so many, like, I think Supernatural has an episode dedicated to La Llorona. I think that... um, Maybe, yeah. I'm pretty confident that they do. Uh, Oh, Grimm did. Grimm Grimm had one. Like... (laughs) Yeah. Um, yeah, but it had... Have you seen Freaks and Geeks? Mm-hmm. So the main girl from that, who was also Velma in the Scooby-Doo live-action oh, movies, yeah. Yeah. she she was in it. Um, gotcha. She was the main female character in the movie. So, like, I wanted to watch it for her, but it just, like... Yeah. Yeah, just didn't do it, but it's okay. And we watched Prey, which was that movie in the Predator franchise, which is set in, like old America and it's following it's following like a native tribe as they deal with like this predator okay um dropping down from their spaceship and like hunting them wow. um so it's called prey and it's about like this journey of this native girl who is like trying to become a hunter and like pass the tests to become a hunter and like the last step is you have to you have to kill something that's hunting you and so the movie is basically about her managing to take out this uh predator okay. monster how that sounds like a vibe it's how, so good how was okay <laughs> it's so good okay. no hope loved it she wasn't expecting to love it and she loved it um you'd probably like it too it's mm-hmm. less horror and more thrillery so like yeah. you're not going to get as many of those big jump scares it's more of like Perfect. suspenseful I hate, I hate those um <laughs> But yeah, it's really, it's really good. It's a great movie, and I was okay. not expecting it. Okay. Um, we watched The Raven, which is about Edgar Allan Poe, mm-hmm. uh, and like kind of his death, and kind of trying to solve the mystery of his death. Which we have an episode about that. We do, we do. <laughs> uh, shameless plug. If you want to go listen to that, we have an episode all about the death of Edgar Allan Poe. It's a good episode. Not gonna lie. Um, we watched Exorcist Believer, which is like. A new movie in the Exorcist franchise, which was um, really bizarre. Uh, are you going to watch this movie? Well, even if you are, you're not, do you don't not really care. care so much about spoilers. So in spoiler fact, alert. In fact, I'd rather have horror movies spoiled for me. That's fair. A spoiler alert um, for those of you listening, if you want to watch this movie. It's it's weird because, like, the demons, like, win. <laughs> oh. Um, at the end, they're, like... Uh, these these two girls are demon possessed and they're like tied to chairs like trying to get exercised and the demon's talking and he's like uh, if you choose one of us to live then we will like let that person go and just kill this one girl so it's basically like either I'll kill them both or you choose one to live and then it ends with like one of the parents of the girls being like, I choose my girl. I choose her because he's like freaking out, you know? Oh my gosh. And then, but then like the twist is the, is the demon is like hot jokes on you. And then he kills the one that they chose and leaves the other one alone. But it's just Terrible. like you. So like the movie ends with them completely playing right into the demon's hands and doing exactly what it wants. And it succeeds and wins and gets the soul of this girl. And like, you see her soul get like dragged to hell like it's just oh my gosh no, yeah i will not be watching crazy. that movie <laughs> um very very bizarre but that one wasn't really the scariest one the scariest one was called talk to me you probably saw ads for it mm-hmm. it's like this stone hand that you like grab onto and when you grab onto it you can like see dead people 
Mm-hmm. Um, there was just one scene in particular that really freaked Hope out, and she like couldn't sleep that night. <laughs> was because there was it was like a scene where it was a dark room, and um, the camera's panning along, and you don't notice anything strange, but then like a shape in the corner of the room starts to move, and it's like no, actually a person, no, no, and it just no. totally, uh-uh. it totally plays into that fear of like when you're in a mm-hmm. dark room and you mm-hmm. see a shape. That's just like a shirt sitting on a chair, right? But mm-hmm. then it turns out it's it's actually mm-hmm. a thing, mm-hmm. and it starts moving towards you. Yeah, that really <laughs> messed Hope up. Uh, I hate it so much. I hate it so much. <laughs> that was a rough one. Oh, I'm freaked out, uh, and I didn't even see it. I know, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was Talk to Me. We watched X, which was another A24 movie. The prequel to Pearl, which I had already seen forever ago, so um, cool to see the prequel. We watched Alien Resurrection, which was an alien movie that I hadn't seen yet, because there's a new alien movie coming out that there's all these trailers for right now. Um, Yeah, okay, that's it for the scary movies. Also been watching (laughs) My Hero Academia, uh, Delicious Dungeon on Netflix. It's so cute. It's so good. And the main guy character in that show is voiced by Damien Haas from Smosh. Oh, oh my gosh, I love Damien. Yeah. So, Delicious Dungeon on Netflix. Um, they're watching Hunter x Hunter with my work buddy Alex, and that's been really fun. Um, and House of the Dragon. Okay. That just ended. And holy smokes. Uh, House of the Dragon. So, yeah, that's what I've been watching. Cool. I know that was, a, that was my longest watching list yet. Because Hope and I, like, every night we, like, picked a new movie. We, like, went to the library and rented, like, eight scary movies from the library. I love, <laughs> I love that okay. so much. Oof. For reading, we finished Stone Sky. The finale episode for that is is also available if you guys have been following mm-hmm. along. Um, so that's out. Go check that out. And you guys, I have, it's so unbelievably oh, good. Great series. Such <sighs> a good series. Um... I have started, and I'm, like, on chapter five or six now, of Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb, which is, like, a fantasy series that I keep meaning to read that I just hadn't gotten around to. And so I'm a good ways into that one. And while you guys were here, I bought the last volume of Free Rin. Hmm. Um, and I need to finish it still, but I started it. So, yeah, Free Rin. Love, Love it. it. Love it. And the playing things that I didn't mention... Um, that was just me, was D&D and Elden Ring. Nice. So. <clears throat> okay. That's it. I need water. to drink a water. water. <laughs> okay, so my watching. Um, man, I've got, this is such a rando list of things. Okay, we've got Futurama. Nice. Cool. Um, then we watched The Lorax, which I had never seen before. Me neither. Was it good? It was good. Yeah, it was quite good. Was it weird? Um, hmm? Was it weird? No, it's like it, it's a Dr. Seuss. I mean, so it's yes. as weird as Dr. <laughs> Seuss normally is, I guess. That's fair. That's fair. Um, but like if you, I mean, I feel like everyone kind of knows what to expect when you go into a Dr. Seuss anything. That's fair. Yeah. Um, and then <laughs> we also watched the SpongeBob movie <laughs> nice. right after we watched the Lorax because the Lorax ended This was after we got back from Texas, so we were hanging out with Blake's daughter, trying to have some fun time with her. Mm -hmm. Um, So we watched the Lorax first, and then we watched the SpongeBob movie, because I don't know why it came up, but it was revealed. Oh, it was because we were looking at movies on Netflix, and they had, like, there's a new SpongeBob movie, apparently. Yeah. Um, And Blake was like, we should watch this. And I was like, oh, I haven't even... I. Is this the is this like the main one? And he was like, no, 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 this is like the third one or whatever. And I was like, oh, I haven't seen any of mm-hmm. them. And he was like, you haven't seen the original SpongeBob movie? It changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> it changed so, my life. <laughs> so then we went back and we we rented the SpongeBob movie from Amazon and watched that. And nice. While I cannot say that it was life changing, it was quite good. Surprisingly nice. so. So. Uh, um, would recommend. Um, also, finished up The Acolyte. Um, I forgot to put that on my list. Yeah. Or, did that end during the last one? I don't remember. 
I don't think I'd watched yeah. it yet. Um, My Hero Academia. Demon Slayer. Mm-hmm. Blake and I finished Rings of Power. So we are ready for season two. Yeah. Starts um, this month. Yeah. Yeah. Um, everything, everything. This is a... I haven't heard of that. Hmm. I watched this for class because our my teen materials class, the last the last thing we had to read was a YA book that had been adapted into another form of media. So like the easiest is to movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so I read the book, everything, everything, which is also on my list here and then watched the movie. It's basically, you've probably seen ads for it. It's the, it's the movie where the girl has, um, skid. And so she's lives in a bubble basically and isn't allowed outside or to see like come in contact with people. Hmm. Because she'll get sick. I have not seen any ads for this. No. No, oh, it's. I mean, it's been out for a while. It's not. It's oh, okay. not new. Um, but she. Uh, yeah, there. I have so many things about this that I could talk about. Um, mm-hmm. but I don't know that we have time for it. I will That's say fair. that generally, um, I think that the movie was better because it is more updated. The book they do a lot of like it's a love story. So the, mm-hmm. the main character and the boy communicate through email and aim mm. chat in the book. Wow. Primarily. Aim chat. Yeah. Dated. Um, very dated. So in the, in the movie, they updated it to just texting, which is much simpler, obviously. Um, that is better. <laughs> yes. And they also did a good job of like, so instead of like, because communicating text conversation is difficult on screen. Yeah. So they they created this like liminal space where when like you start out seeing them texting and then they enter like this cafe. It's not real. It's not a real cafe. It's like a dream liminal space. And they both like they sit across from each other at like a diner table and they have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So that you can see both characters. So I think that that was handled really well. Mm -hmm. Um, Spoiler. At the end of this, it's revealed that this poor girl doesn't actually have skid and that her mom, because her dad and brother died in a car accident when she was a baby, her mom had a very like overprotective reaction and it's kind of in like a state of psychosis, which -hmm. you don't know um, until the girl like runs away to Hawaii, gets sick while she's there. And then the doctor in Hawaii calls her later and it's like, Hey, you got sick because you have a very like weak immune system, but it's not because you have skid. It's because you have not been exposed yeah. <laughs> to anything mm-hmm. in the book. The lady that's like her nurse convinces her to stay in the house with her mom because she's all her mom has. And I felt very um, like that rubbed me the wrong way because it's like mm-hmm. you're convincing her. To stay in a house with essentially her medical abuser. Like her Mm -hmm. mom didn't, like her mom was doing this to her and was doing it out of a good place, but ultimately it was harmful to her. It was abuse. Like it was for sure abuse. Yeah. Um, Yeah, that nurse is uh, bad. So that, like in the book, that bothered me. Yeah. In the movie, she runs away to the nurse's house and the nurse lets her stay there for a while. Okay. While she figures out what to do. I thought that that was a better choice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Anyway, that's way more about everything, everything than you probably wanted, but. It's okay. For reading, um, I don't think I mentioned this in my last one, but I read um, hashtag not your princess. That's the title. Um, Voices of Native American Women edited by Lisa Charlie Boy and Mary Beth uh, Lear Hurdle. Hurdle. Mm-hmm. I can't. I can't. Lear Hurdled. Her yeah. Old. yeah. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Forgot how to read for a second there. Um, it's bas- basically a collection of essays and poems and um, art and fashion mm-hmm. exhibits um, elevating Native American voices for YA nice. readers. It's very good. It's cool. Um, Blake and I started listening to The Alchemist on the drive back from Texas. Um, we finished the Stone Sky, mm-hmm. everything, everything, and then I've been reading The Wild Robot because that movie's coming out soon. Um, so 
Anyway. Uh, cool. And then playing Princess Peach Showtime. And then everything goes <laughs> listed. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Uh, we also, Blake Star and I played um, a Mario game that wasn't Princess Peach. It was like a Mario Party game. Mm-hmm. I couldn't tell you which one. She picked it. Anyway. Fair. Fun. Fair. So. Nice. Yeah. Cool, dude. Yep, yep. Very fun. Well, it was fun getting to play all those games with you guys. Oh my gosh, it was so fun. Kind of on like, I'm kind of sad. Not I know. playing games anymore. It's over. I love that Blake enjoyed Betrayal at House on the Hill so much. That was fun. Oh my gosh, that was a blast. It was it's also fun, game. fun winning. We Yeah, as the traitor. Yeah. <laughs> um... I hope and I were looking it up afterwards. And there's they're on like the third edition now. Oh, which really? so we might have to we might have to get the third edition because there's an expansion to the third edition that's like a Christmassy expansion. Oh my <laughs> and it gosh. Looks, it looks so fun. But uh, okay. But you said yeah. that the other expansion was not good. Do you think that this expansion will be better? Um it looks better. The okay. the one expansion like it just didn't seem like they kind of it seems uh Hmm. what's the word underproduced like they mm. didn't think it through <laughs> gotcha. as well as they needed to gotcha anyway but, uh, well I fully support you getting the third edition and and the Christmas Eve I think Hope put them on her wish list nice yeah That's yeah such a good game. it's a great game well uh, so next week will be the first episode of Tress yeah cool uh, so get to reading. Yeah. I can't wait to start reading. I can't either. <laughs> and we'll have the reading schedule posted in all the places. Yep. But yeah, I guess uh, until next time, go read something cool. And we'll talk to you next time. Later. Bye.